And welcome to the Goo Goo <laughs> Show here tonight on MadhouseTV.com. I'm Nicola Monaco, and of course you know Benny Rizzuti. We are hey. having a couple of technical difficulties tonight, so we're still going to have a great show for you that's dedicated to uh, Robin Williams, a tribute to him. Uh, just yesterday, I believe it was, right? That it was, he was a year that he was gone. Was it yesterday? I know the anniversary is sometime around now. Now, uh, I think it was last week. I'm not really sure. Well, we're tributing but, him because it's been a year since he's passed. <laughs> and, um, you know, we want to talk about some stuff. We have some videos that we're going to show later, some personal um, radio talk that he did with um, a guest that we're supposed to have Skype in with us, Stephen Pearl. If we could get it up and running, that'd be great. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to talk a little bit about ourselves and talk about how was your uh, Labor Day weekend. My Labor Day weekend was fun. Yeah, I, any yeah. comedy involved in it? Uh, a little bit, a, a couple of gigs. Family, yeah, spent time with my family. I was off at gigs and stuff, and uh, and I did some binge watching of TV. Oh. And because I was offered, and you were offered too, we were offered to be in a uh, web series. Right. We're going to be in a web series, Cankasaurs. Cankasaurs. Cankasaurs, and I watched it. I watched 10 episodes. It's very funny. And I'm really looking forward. You're gonna be. I'm gonna be a, a mob guy cool. because because and they, they're gonna come to ask me money, and then they're gonna check out this hot girl that's in the room, and they're gonna say, "Oh, you, you like her? She's hot. That's my daughter." You know? <laughs> I so, can't wait. So yeah, yeah, and uh, I watched the podcast. It's like the Blues Brothers meets Jay and Silent Bob. Okay. So it's it's kind of it's a fun. It really is. I'm not saying it because my friend Kakasaw's. I hope that's that Don Sill. Now, Don we Sill. Had, we had a, a video clip of you doing an interview with him, and then we did a couple of little segments there of his canker sores that we put <laughs> the videos up of. Um, I was at the Oddball Comedy Tour on oh. Friday night. I was supposed to, uh, Lee West, I'm sorry, I was supposed to be at your show at Felt on Friday night, but I got free tickets, so I wasn't saying no to that. And um, it was Amy Schumer and Aziz and uh, Jim Norton and uh, who else was there? Jeff Ross. I actually got up on stage, which was pretty cool. <laughs> I saw that on Facebook. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. Uh, everybody's like, how did that happen? How did that happen? They're like, we need a volunteer. And I was just like, ah, big, 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 and acting like a fool. And I had the DJ shirt on, and basically he picked me because I was acting a fool. And I went up on stage, and he just asked me which indigo girl I was. So because <laughs> of my haircut. Yeah. I was like a lesbian. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was cool. I went up there and did my thing. He's like, oh, what, are you going to blow the DJ? And I was just like, I didn't know what to do. So I just like, did one of those motions. It was really awkward. But it was cool to be up on stage. Yeah, I saw that on Facebook. looking out and just being like, oh, my God, they look at all these people. Like, I want to do this. A lot of our friends were there. A lot of people Yeah, Jessica there. Stern was there. I know that. Dottie Roush was there. Um, who else was there? I don't know, off the top of my yeah. head, but it was awesome. It was a lot of fun, and I had, like, f like front row seats, basically. It That's was, great. It was really cool. So um, Amy Schumer came out, and she, you know, she's from Long Island and went through that whole thing. I was like, oh, I'm here from Long Island, and I'm back home, and she probably blew everybody in the audience <laughs> at some point in her life, <laughs> and, you know, like, it was, it was cool. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You even listen to me back. <laughs> I am, I know. Yeah, yeah, Amy that, Schumer that was, blew everybody in the audience. Whoa, I heard that. Look at this. Yeah, look, look at this over here, the paintings. <laughs> I know, I was The guitar. Listening. My neck the hurts. The ceiling was, fans. <laughs> <laughs> Three days doing nothing. I, my neck hurts. The vacation, was, the the vacation was fun, and then, of course, Nancy at the end of the... I didn't get to do anything. But... Well, we'll have fun. Nothing is better this than, weekend than we're gonna have. With this weekend we're gonna have a lot of fun because uh, my nephew that we show TKO strong right. uh, is a big fundraiser for him at Plata Douche in Great Neck. Plata Douche, I know. Yeah, what a name. <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a platypus with a feminine hygiene problem. It definitely does. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a Plata very douche. nice. Okay. It's a very nice like indoor outdoor restaurant. So when they, they did a fundraiser there a little over a year ago, and there's things for the kids, those blow-up things that they jump in, and then they do raffles. Where, what town is it located? Great Neck. Oh, okay. Great Neck. And what Plain. time? Uh, Saturday the 12th. Saturday and we'll be showing a little clip of what that. What time is it? 
12 o'clock. Is anybody welcome to go? Everybody's welcome to go. Okay. Everyone's welcome to go. And then you can, there are raffles that you buy tickets and you can get a, a when I went last year, I got a Victor Cruz football signed, oh, that's cool. Super Bowl football, and a Peyton Manning poster oh, signed. Nice. Yeah. And Nancy got some big, ba we won stuff. I mean, I didn't go to win stuff. I went wow. to, for my nephew. Well, only that could happen if you were in Vegas. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. That don't happen for me in no. Vegas. But it was fun. It was, it was nice. And they're doing it again this uh, this Saturday, right. the 12th, and I, I believe at 12 o'clock afternoon. Now, if you don't know, um, Benny's, this is Benny's nephew that we're talking about. He has, what, what kind of disease is it? It's like... There's, there's a name for it is... His uh, intestines doesn't really work. His intestines shut down. And for, he's two years old, and it's been intravenous that has been keeping him yeah. alive. He can eat a little bit, but... Uh, kid, man. That's terrible. He can't really break down solid foods. He can uh, Yeah. But he's adorable. He's a beautiful, you know, there's nothing wrong with him in his no, mind. he's a beautiful or, baby. He's so cute. Yeah, yeah, he's adorable. And... Uh, and I'm going to show a clip later, if everything works out right. We're going to show a clip of, uh, All right. of him. That's good. And then, um, actually, uh, the last uh, two weeks ago, we had Mike Fine on the show, who is going to be doing the gong show at the Bolton Center in Bayshore this Saturday, September 12th. I actually have a couple of my customers coming in. They're like, oh, we're going to see the gong show. I was like... I met that guy. <laughs> so um, that was cool. That's exciting. So if you're not doing anything Saturday night after the fundraiser that you should all go to, check out the gong show at the Bowl. And I'm glad Center. you brought that up because after the fundraiser, that's where we're going. It's safe. Yeah, go. yeah. Nancy actually texted me today. Did you get tickets for Mike Fine? I told her, yes, I did, but I didn't. But I told her I well, did. You got okay. it now. You're going to get a beating when you get home if you don't have the <laughs> On the way home, I'm She's going to be like, I spent all weekend inside. I didn't do anything. We're going out this weekend. So, so yeah, so we're going to go. We're going to go to the fundraiser and then we're going to go see the gong show. Awesome. So, that ought to be awesome. That should be fun. Yeah. Because Mike Fine was. He was hilarious. He was very funny. <laughs> I, he was that whole reverend. I don't know. If you've watched the show, he was dressed as a reverend with the Bible and. I'm still not sure if he was serious or not. <laughs> he played it so well. I'm like, really? Is this guy for real right now? I don't know. His face, I just wanted to like stare at his face the whole time because it was just so perfect. He's like, he, Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. And he's holding the brain. He would once in a while say, You know, the, uh, the, uh, and we were like, The Lord? The Lord's name? <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. You know, it was very cool. He was very funny. He's very funny. I can't wait to see this because I believe he wrote. He wrote it to her. He's one of the writers yeah, for it. Yeah, and he's the judge. Yeah. And he's a judge. Yeah. So and he was hilarious. So Very I really funny. can't wait. Yep. So yeah. we um, we're uh, gonna take a quick break right now. We're gonna go to a video, and um, we'll be right back. You're watching the Gagoot Show. Oh, well, tell you? tell the audience what this video is. Why don't you tell them what it <laughs> you is? You tell them. You just. It's, well, I mentioned it a little earlier. It's a tribute of our guest here that we're trying to Skype in with, Stephen Pearl. And Robin Williams uh, doing a radio interview. Uh, they didn't say the location because they didn't want crazy fans to come outside <laughs> the door and like watch them and you know try and get autographs and stuff. So they didn't tell us where it was located. But you know, tune in and watch it. And enjoy it. We'll Thank be you. right back. You're watching the Gagoot Show on MadhouseTV.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Referendum. I'm Stephen Pearl, and this is the big one, Elizabeth. This is the really big one. Yes, it is, folks. Legendary comedian, king of the riffers, Oscar winner, star of Broadway, a man who's done it all and is continuing to do so very strongly. Our good friend Robin Williams was kind enough to invite Al and I over his house and talk to him for the Referendum. We had a lot of fun, I think he did too, and here it is, our conversation with Robin Williams. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, here we are with our good friend. Uh, he's laughing already. The riffs, have, they haven't even started. It's the biggest opening I've ever been. <laughs> right here before. Uh, we've got a good friend, comedy legend, Oscar winner, uh, all kinds of award. What the hell? Mr. Robin Williams is here. Hello. Hello, welcome. Good to see you here. God bless you, We're doing you a, young people. Yes, the goddamn young Kids. people. These yeah, beatniks today with the bongo drums and the beards and the long God hair and the mustaches. Them. What are they, girls? 
tweets in the old days. What is that? A fucking bird makes that noise, I'll tell you that. <laughs> God damn it. You ever notice you go to Brooklyn, you see that guy with the one arm who's blowing his nose on his sleeve? I see that. Thank you. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Good comedy of Tommy oh, wow. Smegmetti. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, uh, here we, we won't say where we are. We don't want fans. Shh, just that. No, no, yeah. it's a, it's Somewhere a, we don't want them to the sound Google check you. Yeah, yeah, we don't want people with, you know, reading cats from the rye outside. Or, yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the sequel, Shortstop and the Pumpernickel. Which well, the guy knocked on my, when I lived in the city, knocked on the door and said, hey, Robin, come on out. The unicorns are in the park. I went, I'm okay. Thank you. <laughs> and then the one drunk yelling out, Hey, Robin, where's Batman? <laughs> thank you, Bobby. <laughs> All night. Did you oh, no, he was drunk. He was hanging out at China Beach just screaming at the top of his lungs. I think the police eventually He came, came to your house? Oh, I, I think he was talking to everybody's house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the voices like, in my filling tell me to like you. I right. like you. Where's Cindy? Uh, you mean Mindy? Yeah. 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 When are you, when is this going to be Mork and Magellan? Watch the fun when it's the explorer moves in with the wagon. Mork and Mengele. You'll see it. It'll be amazing. Oh, well, thank you. It's going to be. I just I just love the drive over here. is so good for the soul, man. Oh, it it's so fuck, it's fuck LA, man. You see the city. You see the bridge. You see Mount Tavern. Even San Quentin looks good from a distance. It's, it's, weird, the, it's weird how beautiful it looks on a, on a day like today. Uh, oh, it's so nice. Oh, it's like, it's like, I wonder who's getting gang raped in there today. You, know? Someone's you can feel the salad hand. toast. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. I had to take the cheese quiz by the CHP's giving. I don't know if it was just me or everybody. <laughs> Cop cheese or government cheese? <laughs> <It's a big laughs> difference. Cheese. Good. Fantastic. Here's cheese Jeez. food. It's good. It's rubbish. Don't worry about it. Wow. Well, it's a, thank you so much for joining us. And I uh -huh. want to congratulate, we, we, Al and I want to congratulate on winning uh, the Comedy Icon oh, Award. So Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another, so, so you bizarre. have rooms for all the awards in this house. It's, you have to go to another so room. so bizarre. It's just like you go, thank you, but wow. <laughs> Is that said, pressure on you still? No, not at all. No. Just, like I said, you look out and go, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, another one. It's a bit like a Republican orgy. Where are all the ladies? You know, <laughs> it's like it was, uh, but it was fun to see the people like us. So Patton was there briefly, Lily, mm -hmm. and a bunch. Of, and the people I know, and it's like you'd see a few faces, and then a lot, then a lot of times I'm like, I don't know you, but nice to meet you. <laughs> like being at a party, you weren't invited oh, to. It's such like, a surreal people? night. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Riff Ferendum. I'm Stephen Pearl and My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we do 15 years. We a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Being a fireman is more than just putting out blazes and giving kittens CPR. Sometimes my duty demands I fan the flames, 
like when a call comes in from a lady who needs immediate assistance. Maybe she needs help with that computer thing. Maybe she wants to go antique. Could be as simple as understanding that walking in heels is... It's hard. Aussi simple que l'été dernier à Paris. C'est sympa. Maybe it's ladies night in, and she wants a simple, delicious recipe for margaritas. With a twist. First, a can of limeade. Now hold on to this. You'll be using it. Side note, kittens make everything better. Next, add water. Now, a bottle of light beer. It's not, shh, trust me, I'm a professional. And last, and most important, Salsa Blue Tequila. Now, mix it up. Ole. Yes, that's what I'm trained for. Whether it's to help her choose leggings or pants, telling her leggings are pants, or discussing leggings and jeggings versus pant pegging at her next ladies' night in, I'll come to the rescue. Don't call me a hero. Just call me. Let me know what time. And we're back with our very special guest, Tim Thompson. Oh, thank Only you, good. Thank you, and this is our Robin Williams tribute show. This is great. It's going along swimmingly, I see. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. We're Skype virgins. Skype virgins. Skype virgins. Right. Skype virgins. Just Skype. So, so just, the studio is not. For me, it's just Skype. Just Skype. Everything else you've done. Skype. All right, that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. Every type of form of computer, like... Friendster, everything. You've everything done it. I've done. Skype. So many viruses. So many. I see you get a little. I've never Skyped either. I've yeah, done them. This is part of it. Don't come on. Okay, don't, I'm don't, sorry. I'm sorry don't, for bringing don't things up. Don't pull it out in front of people. I don't, I don't need that. But no, thank you for having me. Oh, you thank you. You are very for welcome. You're very welcome. I enjoyed Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I grew this beard just for this day. Oh, you did? No. <laughs> But I thought that would make it more interesting. I don't think I mentioned, we, we were talking uh, during the commercial, our favorite movies. Your favorite, Robin? Is The Birdcage. Your Birdcage is your favorite Robin Williams movie? Yes. Okay. Mostly, I mean, I love Robin Williams, but Nathan Lang is amazing in it, too. Let's not knock him. I know it's about Robin Williams, That's but true. Nathan Lang and him together were just magnificent. <laughs> and I love the, the Fisher King, but I also thought Jumanji. Jumanji. Comes in a close second, too. Oh, Jumanji. That was a good movie. That was really that was good. good. It was very cute. <laughs> it was cutesy. It was good to see David Alan Greer working. <laughs> very so funny, like. man. He is very funny. But that's, uh, so Fisher King is a serious movie. So Jumanji is your favorite comedy or children's Fisher movie? Fisher King has a lot of different movies. He does have a lot of children's movies. A lot of he children's movies. Kind of, yeah. I mean, how could you not love Mrs. Doubtfire? Mrs. Doubtfire, that's great. He was a... Uh, classic. I know, it really shaped the way Caitlyn Jenner turned her life around. <laughs> yeah. That really changed it was, Actually, her life. it was an inspirational film Absolutely. for her, him. It was tough for British women, like, now, how are we going to get hired? They could just get these guys from America to play it. <laughs> yeah. Dame Judi Dench hated it. <laughs> well, he stole Super her wardrobe, Danny. right? He did. He did. I love that movie. I love when he's doing all the like when they're cha trying to see which one suits him best. You like you like the dressing montages of yeah. movies. <laughs> yeah, you me like too. That? Okay, I'm a fan. And Har okay, what was it? The guy who played his brother, Harvey. Harvey Fi Fire. Harvey Firestein. Yes. Gay. I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> <laughs> you look just like mom. What he does. He was great at Independence Day. Yeah, he was in there. Forget my lawyer. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. David Dope, it's okay to cry. All right, but enough about Harvey Firestein. <laughs> Robin Williams. But, uh, Robin Williams. He, he made that Mrs. Doubtfire, when he goes to visit his brother, I need you to make me a woman. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's your favorite? I, you know what? It's not a popular one. I like Death the Smoochie. That was a, a Danny DeVito-directed movie, which is, it was a really dark movie about the, uh, 
the CD on her belly of children's uh, television. It was very dark, and uh, I like Edward Norton. It's actually fun. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, I will. Three people watching. Uh, really? <laughs> I will watch it. Okay. You want to no, see it. No, definitely. You're it's the second good, person yeah. to tell me that that was a really good movie. All right. So, All right. And then Robin Williams made some science fiction movies. What? He did. He made one. I don't remember. Bicentennial Man? Indepen Bicentennial Man. But some of, yeah, that's, that's one. That's true. Then there was another one. I don't remember the name of it. But it was about that when you are uh, young, when you're little, they put this implant into your skull that's like a camera. Mary Poppins. So it was Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that it? And when you die, Super when you die, they thing. take that out. And at your funeral, they like show it. They put it together. They edit. Really? They edit your life. What movie and is they, this? I don't are you sure this was a real movie, Benny? It. it was a Robin Williams movie. And he was one of those guys that went when you passed away. And removed it, and then would edit. So if there were bad things you, you did, you know what? I think I vaguely remember that. Yeah. Wait, he then, edited it. That was his job. You, Actually, I think that was a recent movie. Like that was near his the end of his career. Uh, I uh, think it was like ten years ago or so. Ten years. Ago. I don't remember oh. the name of it. It's basically, like towards the end of his. Career. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now, I'm really good. I'm glad you did research for this big <laughs> I Robert Williams extravaganza. Like, well, this movie was for in our, our interview that we're hoping. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about, let's celebrate Robin. Let's celebrate. let's celebrate Robin. Do we have balloons? Do we have a cake? Do we have any wine? We should have any something wine? hanging. We don't even have like a Mork and Mindy cut out or something. <laughs> you know, you're right. Did you, was that, did you like that show? <laughs> was that your favorite Happy Day spinoff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it safe to say? I, you know, that's funny. Hanging. Shut up. I forgot that that, that <laughs> Mork and Mindy is a Happy Day spinoff. It is, yes. I didn't remember that. Technically, he, the show was created and then they had the character introduced on uh, Happy Days. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. We are teaching the kids. <laughs> I, the <laughs> schools have failed you. They are. Oh, I, don't, my God. I, I was shouldn't have went to school. It was oh, it's a waste. I didn't learn anything. Like, Look at you. You didn't. You're so no. intelligent. You're... Not really. <laughs> I'm pretty dumb, to be honest with you. Like, I say a lot of dumb things. Like, no, no, it's all right. I do. I'm okay with it. I, I say right. dumb things. This is a safe place. It is. But you were whizzing on a computer before. Don't do that. I, you <laughs> I gave it a virus. I gave it a virus. It got in my hands, and all of a sudden it was sick. And oh a woman God. wouldn't shut up. And she was just like, if you're holding this, you got a virus. Like, <laughs> no, go away. Get it out of my face. We know what was sick. One hour photo by Robin Williams. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to bring it back. Uh, did you ever see that? That was actually, yes. I think that destroyed the film industry. That's what actually put over digital film. No that one was movie. no longer going to get Solely that movie. You know, oh, I don't want to give Wait, a free Wait, I'm, I'm just curious to go back for a second with this whole thing that you were just talking about with the brain and the play is back. But, yeah. like, he, his job was to edit. Yeah, I'll have lives. to look it up. I have to watch this movie now because, I guess the like, footage of their lives, he had to edit for... What because was it, for he had to take Facebook out, like... Page a, yeah, but who so, is he to judge? Who is he to be yeah, the one but, to be, like... All right, I'll give you, you an know, idea. There that's was, the... That's there the was somebody... How did he... I gotta find out why but he if was you picked were, to do that job. Because you, you have to see it for that. But it was like, say somebody was a, a pillar of the community. Someone's a pillar but of the they community. Did, <laughs> someone's a pillar of the community, and he had that I camera thing in him. Now he dies. <laughs> you find out that uh, when he went to Subway, he used to have sex with young girls. He would cut that out. And I'm kind of not being far. So if Jared died and had a camera, and I'm oh like, Jared, would, oh it's a reference to Jared. <laughs> he would make like Jared. what pillar of the community had sex? Had, I don't think Jared had sex with the children at Subway per se. Yeah, I know, but I threw in the sub. I had to get the sub. But anyway, he took in the blimpies. It was a <laughs> yeah. part of his contract. But anyway, there was something like that. There was like a man who was a well-known, like say, a politician, mm -hmm. and he was uh, he was a pedophile. Mm. And Robin Williams cut that out because so people would see, oh, all the great things he did, but he edited well, out that. the bad things. Show him what they did. But he's dead now. Why are you going to besmirch the man's name? It's not going to help any. People should know. Okay. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, it was probably fictional. I know that, but still. <laughs> yeah. If it was, it was in real but... life, if it was a real life scenario, like... So you want all the, the nitty gritty of your life, the things that you didn't want anyone that you to see? Regret? I'm dead at this point. Okay. I'm so, dead. But you want your regrets? You want people to... Let them see it. It'd be an interesting movie. 
I don't know. I don't can't see you having many regrets. I, oh, uh, I leased the car. I'm, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you leased the car. I can't believe you said that in public. Big regret. Oh, my God. What yeah. a regret. I it leased is. the car. No, I have regrets. Everybody has, like, a couple of things here and there. Like, you, know, but. you think Robin had regrets? <laughs> I think we all do. I, I bought two Hondas. You guys are very <laughs> auto-related regrets. I, I drove a Hyundai. I was that the that. worst thing? <laughs> what <is> she, <laughs> she doesn't want to be seen with you anymore. Well, hiding in the couch. Um, yeah, regrets, regrets. I've had a few uh, singing my way. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know. I'm right. glad I made it. I am so antsy right Thank now. I can't sit still. It looks like I, I have hemorrhoids or something. I really? Cannot, I, I don't, Benny. No, not really. But <laughs> I know because no, things aren't going. Be. Things aren't working the way we thought. We were supposed was. to have the video come in, and Stephen Pearl was supposed to be joining us for this whole thing. But being that it's not working, we're really just going off the cuff right now, which is not. And Stephen Pearl's a wonderful man. Look, we're hey, he was a friend of Robin Williams. He was a friend of Robin Williams. Since I didn't bring it back. on that video back. that you just watched. But um, he was and supposed we... to come in and tell us some stories about him and bring it to life right now, I guess. And, and we're having trouble with the volume of the Skype. Yeah, so it's not really working. So we're kind of just rambling right now. <laughs> we're rambling. And uh, my, my laptop doesn't... My laptop we should just let Tim talk the entire time. Why? Calm right. down. Just you, just just talk, cause you're you're. You remember what dreams may come? Yeah. Yes. Doesn't that sound like perfect for a porn parody? <laughs> yeah. Why not? All right, I'm done. What wet <laughs> dreams may come? There it is. He nailed it. <laughs> you said it. I didn't want to say it. All right. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, that happens to be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The person who wrote that, the author of that book, was Richard Matheson. No, it was Kevin. <laughs> okay, Kevin. Matheson. Kevin Matheson. All right, Richard Matheson. Anyway. Great writer, and I was so glad they made that. And Robin Williams' acting in that movie was incredible. That was a good movie. It was a good movie. That was it. But what? the Fisher King, which Nicole never saw, the Fisher King, and you got—that's the movie you have to see. He's I will. because that movie makes you laugh. It makes you cry. It makes you want to get drunk and drink some Jack Daniels after. That's all <laughs> I want to do after. That's every I'm movie drunk. for her. <laughs> You should see her after Sandlot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 Turn it around her arm. <laughs> it the does it to me. Squints. The jet. All right. You're killing me small. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? You're, You're killing, killing me, me small. I'm going to go the other direction. Were there any work that uh, Robin, you didn't enjoy? You thought it was subpar? You're like, oh, I wish he didn't do that. No. No? <laughs> Wait, no. Everything perfect? I liked everything he did. Every, Every single thing. He took chances. Flubber. Flubber. Ooh. Yeah, but Flubber whoa. was a, re, a Disney remake. It was dumb. Still, it was still a movie. It was a horrible movie. It was a dumb movie, and I didn't like it, and I don't want to see it again. But I think you liked Flubber. Well, I used to take my son to uh, the movies all the time. Don't blame him. And he made me t take him to see Blubber. And went. we actually, I think I took Ryan to every Robin Williams movie that came out during Robin we would go see uh, every Robin Williams movie in the theater. Really? Pretty much, yeah. Except for the one I told you about with the guy with the camera in his head. You didn't take him to that one? Did no. you take him to go see Aladdin? Uh, uh, he wasn't born then. Really? Yeah. Oh, he's younger than me. I took, Nan I took Nancy to see Aladdin. He's you did? Me. Yes. You took your wife to see a cartoon? To see what? A cartoon? Yes. Okay. My wife and I used to actually wa watch cartoons. We now, what's your favorite Robin cartoons. Williams cartoon? Is it Aladdin? Uh, the, he did Happy Feet 2, right? He did Happy Feet 1 as well. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Feet as well. <laughs> Happy Feet also. He did, um, he did Aladdin, and what, he did something he else. He did too. Robots, he did Fern Gully. Yeah, Robots, yeah. Fern Gully. Yes. Oh. It was the bat. I think that might have been his first Virgo. animated movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm all about the genie. It's mm -hmm. all about the genie? Yeah. Oh. I did that. What, um... <laughs> he did serious movies. He did a lot of different... Well, let's break it down. What was his favorite serious movie of his? What, what, which one? You said Fisher King. Fisher King, and he was nominated, and I felt Dead he deserved Poets it. Society. Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society. Yes. I like that movie yeah. a lot. That was good. 
Good morning, Vietnam. What was the name of that movie? <laughs> that, he had that line. Good morning, Vietnam. That was the name of the movie. That was the name of the movie, too. Good morning, Vietnam. What? Computers. That, that was a good movie. Whoa. I like that. Good morning, Vietnam was a very good movie. What war was that take place in? Uh, Vietnam. <laughs> And I fell for it. That was really bad. I actually <laughs> fell for it. That was weird. It was weird for him to play actual a Vietnamese soldier in that. He was not a he had, Vietnamese. He so, wasn't. No. No, he had like a Vietnamese radio station, right? He was a a DJ. He was a DJ. An American GI DJ. American. Why would you have a Vietnamese person as an American GI? He wasn't Vietnamese. He wasn't. You don't no. think he could play Vietnamese? Did you ever see the movie? I saw the You're movie. You're just messing with me. Of course he's We're just trying to fill to time here, you son of a bitch. I, mean, I know, but what, what war was that? Not me, I'm a Mama Luke. I said, Vietnam. <laughs> Good morning, Vietnam, yeah. Tim Thompson's so serious in his delivery of everything. It's just, you You don't know. You just, you don't know. Enough about me. It's about <laughs> Robin. I, yeah. I've sat with him and just sat at like a... At some barbecues, and he just starts rattling off, and I, I can't. I'm, I have to go to the bathroom because I'm going to wet my pants. He has me laughing. Yeah, what? that's a serious do problem. No, do we? Do we have this to segment go? brought to you by Flomax. Flomax. <laughs> <laughs> what elderly was men that? urinate. Just made a fart noise because sometimes people fart while they pee. <laughs> it's true. It's yes, a good point. Especially Italians. Really? Is it? Is it really just Italians? It's that only the like Italians. It's the other. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I love like, discovering new stereotypes. People, people, in, people who live like in Connecticut and stuff, they don't fart. They, don't, no. they drive to New York to fart. I have a lot of guests. Let's go to New York because I, I have to pass wind. <laughs> yeah, there are parts of I don't the country. Think that's true. I believe there's parts of the country where people don't pass wind. All right, besides Connecticut, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are the states? In our union, do people do not pass wind? Probably Alaska. like Rhode Alaska. Island. Rhode Island, yeah. Rhode Island. More, that's more New England, but the Rhode Island, I think Alaska. Alaska, I think Alaska no one, they no one save it up. In it. You think so? There's certain air, yeah. It's hard to fart in the cold. I guess. It hurts, too. It hurts. We get, oh, you know what I like in the wintertime? Why? We're talking about farts. <laughs> <laughs> like, Actually, we're talking about yeah. Robin Williams. But all right. <laughs> we're, we're, we went from Robin Williams to. Farts. I like in the winter time if you're outside and it's cold <laughs> and you have that warm fart that like warms up your pants. You know, I've like had that. one of those before. You know what the worst is? Shower farts. You ever fart in the shower? <laughs> you ever try to blow bubbles with your farts? No. No. Okay. It just happens naturally. Me neither. <laughs> shower farts. Anyway, uh, we're going to be right back. We're, we're going to take a commercial <laughs> break. I'm going to drive to Connecticut and fart. the Good Show here on MadhouseTV.com. Tribute to Robin Williams. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and run Cockman, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkman, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, 
um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. Glad you're back. So you in oh, town for a while? Are you gonna... Yeah, home for a little for bit. Products. I'm trying to figure out looking for films. You know, it's yeah. like I'm doing a lot of these small movies where you go and you work for like oh, like ten days and then come home and then so it's like you you try and see where's the next one. A lot of times, they're, like there's supposed to be this movie that's based in Baltimore, so they're shooting it in Cleveland. I went, well, why can't you shoot it in Baltimore? But I guess it's always <laughs> they get deals in different cities and I don't know it's so strange. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like it's not enough bowling alleys in strange. Baltimore, so shoot Oh leave. yeah. And then it's a lot of times when you do movies about New York, they would shoot it in Toronto. And you're like, it's Brooklyn, eh? But it's like, <laughs> you know, and the extras would be like you know hardcore Canadian people and very sweet, but not Brooklyn. So it's oh like, yeah. Well, whenever whenever you get a chance to do a movie in New York. With New Yorkers, oh, it's insane. Oh, yeah, it's for the real. Like Jackie Chan did that rumble in the Bronx film. Yeah, the band. Yeah. We see yeah, mountains Whist in the back. Mount Whistler's in the background. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> flags with a leaf on it. Wait, this is Brooklyn. This isn't the New York I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, come on, let's get a <laughs> slice of hey. hovercraft. Let's get a beer. <laughs> Brooklyn? <laughs> my name's Pierre Venditti. Come on over. Yeah. Come on, I'll fight you. Bonjour, we... see. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, let's, let's go back to the beginning. Flashback time. Born in Chicago, I believe. Born in Chicago, 1951. July 21st, 1951. Yeah. I know. And uh, were you drawn to humor as a little kid? You know, not you know? at all. I was so fucking quiet. And I think my, my the, here's the drill. My my father's kind of very, kind of quiet and very intense. My, my, his nickname used to be the Pasha because he was very <laughs> kind of. But after you have a couple of drinks, he was very sweet. Let me buy you a car. Dad, I'm six. <laughs> but he was lovely and kind. And you know, and he was always on the road because he was working for a Ford Motor Company. And he had to go back and forth all over the Midwest to take care of all these dealerships. But every time he came back, he would bring me some kind of like a small car or a tank or something. And I'd be like, Dad's home. So it was like that was my connection with my father for the, like, the first 12 years of my life. And my mother was very sweet, very funny. I mean, here's an example. My mother was a Christian scientist who had plastic surgery. <laughs> I used to joke that she was a Christian Dior scientist. But, 
so, but she was always about kind of entertaining and being fun. She, here's one of her party jokes. She would take a rubber band, cut it, open it up, and then stuff it in her nose. And be, <laughs> and be at these dinner parties with these very elegant people and go, and the thing would fall out. <laughs> I love her already. God bless her. And my dad would be like, Lori, please. And, and, but she would be like, and that was her idea of like, you know, playing. And she was, and people still remember her. Like, I'll be going around Marin. And there'll be people going, how's your mom? Dead. But, <laughs> but they knew her from just her outfits, her tennis playing, and just her general demeanor, just being so open and very sweet. And I, I did meet her in 82 when you oh, had the place. And, and I, I immediately knew when I met her, he got it all from her. He got oh, it all from time. her. The comedy from her and the acting from my dad, because my dad was just very, very, very ethical, very intense, and just very, just a good guy. In terms yeah. of, and, but I think he kind of gives me the chops for acting, and my mother gave me the perf- the desire to perform, even the need to perform. Uh-huh. It's that whole thing Lenny Bruce used to say, it's, you know, or Freud. I used to have this pillow that it was a quote, it was a made up quote from Freud. If it's not one thing, it's your mother, Sigmund Freud. <laughs> and my mother goes, What does that mean? I went, Oh, I don't know, Mom. It's uh, years of therapy, but we'll talk. <laughs> but sweet lady, and yeah. very. Once I started making, you know, with Mork and Mindy and everything, the house was like the Mork Museum. Uh-huh. She kept my room. It was the same. Once I left to go to college, it stayed the same. It was like a time travel. Uh-huh. It was like you'd walk in there going, it was like the same, same stains. What are those? <laughs> but he's growing up. He's growing up. He's taking long showers. <laughs> but it was just, she kept every article ever written about me. And we're back! Yeah. Finally, we got everything up and running. Yay! We're on Skype with Stephen Pearl. Hello, welcome to the Gagoo Show. Hey. Thank you for joining us. We just watched your. What? Good to see you, Harvey, and all the TMZ staff. <laughs> Oops, wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> we just what? watched your video. Hey. We just watched your video. What was that? We just watched your video of the radio oh. interview. So tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you guys meet? Where did this all come about? Tell me everything that you know. <laughs> everything. Well, I, I moved to San Francisco. I came out for a visit in the summer of 1976 where I, I lived on Long Island. I grew up on Long Island like you guys. And uh, I'd never been pretty much out of the area, and I just fell in love with the place. And I go, well, why don't I just save my pennies and live here? So uh, a couple of years later, I moved out to San Francisco in early seven. Well, I, I scoped it out in early 79 for a few months, the comedy scene. I wanted to be a comedian, and I started going to places, and I saw Robin perform at a place called The Boarding House, which is not there anymore. I think it's a crack house or a unicycle repair <laughs> shop now or something. But, uh, that seems about it, right. So the more it was brand new, and his fame was new, and I was just amazed, and I knew then, like, I want to get into this whole time. And I think that's about him and another gentleman called Bill Kirkenbauer, who's still doing it and still hysterically funny. I think I saw him there the, the same week, and both of them just had me belly laughing big time. And then there was a little club called the Holy City Zoo, which a lot of us got our start at, this little bitty log cabin, smelly little place. And I was hanging out there one night, and I see a guy who looked just like Robin walked in, and I go, that that can't be him, that's got to be a guy who looks like him. And he went on stage and just killed for an hour and a half, and it was Robin. And he spoke (laughs) a little bit after that. And, uh, you know, he was in San Francisco all the time, he was from there, and... uh, I'd see him here and there. We'd just become friends, you know, like one comedian to another. He was hugely, bigly famous, and I wasn't. But, uh, you know, he hung out with us. It was great. We had a lot of fun. And uh, we became friends from that. And uh, I moved to L.A. in 87, and I lost contact with him. Then I moved back up here in, oh, when? 2009. <laughs> back in 09, uh, to reconnect with an old girlfriend I had seen in 23 years. And so we're engaged now. I'm very happy, by the way. And hey. I just reconnected with Robin. And he was up here. We just started seeing each other a lot. Hung out, we went to his house, and he invited us to his wedding. We stayed with him in New York when he did his play a few years ago. It was just great. You know, he was a great friend that he he shared the goodness that he had. Hey, he brought a lot of joy and goodness to everybody, to all of us. And that's why we're doing the tribute, too. Because they asked him to do five benefits in one night, and he was able to split himself into five people. He would have done it. He was always available to do any charitable event. He was just a great guy. When he first heard I was doing a podcast show, he said, oh, let me be on it, let me be on it. It was like a little kid, and like three days later, I'm at his house interviewing him. He was just so generous. He said, oh, I'm doing a play in New York. You got to come visit me and stay with me. And so me and my fiance flew in. We stayed with him for a few days, saw the play, went around New York and Long Island. I had a great time. He was amazing. You know, about how many 
people that famous, you know, is, oh, come to our meeting. Come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> yeah, Great right. Guy. He just moved one of us. This was huge. What was, your, what was your favorite memory of him? Too many, too many. Well, yeah, give, give, me your, give me your top one. five. Give me your top five then. <laughs> well, going to his wedding was amazing. His, his uh, third wife, Susan, who's a really good person, inviting us to New York to hang out with him and see the play was amazing. It was just incredible. So, you know, we were, we were, we were staying with him in his apartment and we're, you know, we didn't bother him during the day. We ran around and did things. But uh, he would just, he would just, Share the wealth, you know. I don't know. Oh my God, that's not socialist. But uh, <laughs> he was just he was extremely generous, especially you know. I I think he admired what I we've been on stage again from the time Drift on stage and off. And uh, you know, I, I looked at him more as a friend than a legend because I just knew him that way. So he was just a good, good person. If if you just met him for the first time, went up to him and told him you were a comic, he'd, he'd be interested. Oh, oh, what kind of comedy do you? Where did you perform? Where did you just? It wasn't like, oh, that's nice, I'll see you later. He was just re really interested in, you know, the people he met. He's a good person. That's awesome. I heard that about him. I heard someone uh, had posted on Facebook a woman, a young girl, that her first time she bombed, and he happened to be at the club, and he went over to her. She told the story. He went over and put his arm around and just yeah. hung out with her and, uh, and uh, helped her to, you yeah. know, get over, overcome... Uh, overcome her fears and everything. And she said it was like the greatest moment for her to, because she was ready to give it up. And he talked her into, into you well, know, going. It was extremely encouraging, especially if you felt you had something there. And uh, believe me, we've both been stared at a number of times on stage. And I've seen him stare at after he was famous, you know. And he would just be trying out new stuff and he'd do something, he wouldn't get let him hook. So, uh, you know, so we both know what it feels like. You know, even if you're famous, you can have a set where they go, oh, what's he doing? Yeah. So, uh, you know, he, he knew that feeling. And, you know, he knew if somebody was doing that for the first, or second, or third, or 20th time, you know, and they had what they considered a bad set, they'd feel bad. He would just go up, you know, don't worry about it. And that's good coming from anyone else or any other town. Coming from him, you know, whoa, okay, I'll keep doing this. So, you know, he was just a good man, you know, with a good heart, a good soul. And, uh, you know, can I tell you? Now, I want to ask you something. With the podcast, we showed clips of pictures that you provided for us of uh, different. Now, there's a picture of you, Robin, uh, Michael Palin, and another comedian. I didn't know doing it. You did radio? You did a radio show way back when? Yes. That was Alex Bennett's radio show. I don't know if you remember Alex Bennett from when he was in New York. He was on uh, late night, yeah, late night bonus show back in uh, the early 70s. And then he uh, went to San Francisco. And uh, I don't know when it was, but it was the early 80s, and, and he was on, uh, in the morning, on AMBL radio, I think it was like fake AWA or Black or whatever they were, but uh, he'd have a lot of comics on, and this was when the comedy boom was starting, and we would go on the show, like I would go on fairly regularly, and some other guys, and we'd become local stars, we were like gods in three area codes, and uh, <laughs> the other guy, the other comic you mentioned, who didn't know was a guy named Jeremy Kramer. Who was one of the funniest guys ever? The audiences didn't always get him, but he'd have the comics dying laughing in the back. And he was really good friends with Robin at that time. And he brought him on to Alex's show. And I wasn't invited, but I crashed the show. I'm showing up anyway. <laughs> and Michael Palin was on. Most I'm standing up. I was on the air with him, but once Palin showed up, I stood up and got off the air. But uh, that was a lot of fun. I think I sent you part of a YouTube clip of it. Somebody put that show up. And it, we just went there and just went nuts in the morning. It was a lot of fun. That was a great time, though. Tim? Oh, hey, Steve. Uh, quick question. Did you know him before he hit on, like, Mork and Mindy? No, I didn't no, know him at all. I know some guys like Nick Overbridge didn't know him and uh, some other people. But I met him uh, shortly after Mork and Mindy came on. The fame was huge. He, back then, he was kind of guarded around him, like most of them, because the fame was new. And yeah. He how, was, did, how did he deal with he, that? He was being, like, known everywhere. It was like Beatles fame. You know, it was like Frank Sinatra fame. Yeah. Did he deal with it well? Oh, I mean, oh, with I the, the being uh, big now, like, you know, you're a comic, you just go do your set, and you go home, and you're big for only a few minutes, but then to be known and seen everywhere, and everyone running up to you, how do you, how do you deal with that? that. I, I never had that. I probably never will. I, but oh, you got time. <laughs> well, uh, they say, say when you make it that big, everyone is entitled to be a creep for two years, two to three years. And uh, they say Chevy Chase never got out of that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, I never knew Bob that way. You know, he'd be a little guarded. And uh, But, 
he was, you know, once he was his friend, he was his friend, and he was always posing for pictures with people and fans. He never turned anyone down for an autograph or anything. He was just always very cool with people. So uh, he was just a good person. And he, he, he you know, he, he just spread the joy, is what I like to say. He, right. he, if I ever had a movie, not that my life's that interesting, but if there was ever a movie made, I always pictured Robin Williams playing my dad for some reason. Is that so weird? I feel like he, <laughs> he would portray my dad so well. Actually, I saw him playing you. He did. I could see Robin Williams playing her. He, he can play any sex. He's got it. Missed out for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, um, he had that way about him. His full life. Oh, he was... He could, he could go on stage by himself and just rip and kill. He could do an act and kill. He could go on stage with his improv group and kill. He was amazing. And then he put him in any instance, any circumstance, and he'd just come through big time. It was amazing. Give, to give, watch. give us a little something of like the nitty gritty. Like, you know, you guys are such good friends. And like, give me a story of like you guys are out or one night and something crazy happened or. What? What's the craziest story you got with Robbie? Yeah. You kill a hobo? What'd you do? Well, there's a lot. Patients and stuff, but uh, there was, uh, you know, in the old days, there were substances involved, and we'd go out looking for them, and, uh, and I'd be like five of us in the bathroom, and Rob would be across the street, and there'd be a knock on the door, and open, oh, oh, and he could smell it across the street. <laughs> wow. But, uh, <laughs> he was like a blood out, but uh, that was the 80s, and we were all crazy. And I like to say, nobody slept in the 80s. We were all doing it in the 80s. We were, well, I, I, I wasn't. Uh, we he wasn't. He was a child. <laughs> Bucks in our pockets, the comedy boom was happening. I regret nothing. And if I was younger, I would do twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> now, you also wrote material for Robin, right? You're yeah, in your credits. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's against my will, but, the, <laughs> but if you said something funny around him, you have to be careful because the next night he'd go on stage and it would be there. Oh. So, uh, so I'd like, like to say I was on Carson Letterman and uh, I, I never left the house either of those nights. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you didn't know you were writing for him? You found yeah, out later. If I, if I said something on stage and I heard oh, in the background, I'm like, oh boy, that's going to be on TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Did you ever talk to him about was, that? There's always, uh, you know, there was a, a financial gratuity involved. Oh, there was. <laughs> but, well, that's good. But, but my rent was paid. Let's put it that way. All right. Hey, that's great then. It's compensation. It's good. So you, you. And Jam and wrote a few things together too when I knew it was going to happen. But they, you know, how about this? Oh, that's good. <laughs> so uh, you know, he was, he was he was unpredictable. So let's put it that way. So uh, you you knew him well. Did he enjoy making movies, or was his real true love like comedy, doing stand up? He liked making movies, but after like I know he would like, do a twelve hour day on the set and then immediately go to a comedy club to blow off some steam. He just loved to perform. And uh, there's a place called the Throckmorton Theater in Mill Valley uh, that I play at a lot. Really beautiful, like, 100-year-old theater. Charlie Chaplin played there in the day. Great the faith, the Lee Mercer of runs it. And I'm there hanging out, usually going on stage, and just blow the audience away. Even if they were used to seeing him, it's <laughs> He was just, it was like his home base. And uh, he just loved to perform, you know, like I do, like a lot of us who just love to get on stage. You know? And even with his fame and everything, he wouldn't turn down a chance. Oh, yes, four months ago. Yeah, I think he went on shortly after his heart surgery. I, I thought he would think, oh, yes, I'm going to do this. I feel like out of breath, but, uh, you know, he was, he was, he nailed it, man. He, just loved, he was a performing junkie like I am. I'll, I'll never lose that. Some guys get older and, oh, I don't want to go on as much, but if there's a stage nearby, I'm going on it. And he felt the same way. Well, that's good. It, it kept him yeah. young. I mean, the guy, I never saw him yeah. calm. Never. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm seeing. I was watching your stand up, and like I was watching you, and you're the same. You're also like very, very hyper, and it's great. You won't get. You know, I'm not going to give up either. I'm going to do comedy no, in a wheelchair. Man, look, <laughs> it's it's just it's fun. Why give up something that's fun? You know, I, you guys, I see a bunch of good people. I really admire people who make something happen. Especially, since I'm such a lazy so and so. To me, I get winded going to the bathroom. But you guys are making something happen out there. I think it's wonderful, and I'm really proud to be able to. Well, we finally got the Skype so, happening. You know, <laughs> Thank you. Well, we finally you. got the Skype happening. So Yeah, we just need people to watch yeah, it. <laughs> we'll get things done. Do it first. In the old country, the island of Long. Hello to everyone in Rosedale. Hey, how are you? Gibson, you look good. Oh, it's good. A good old Stephen Pearl, a good old Long Island boy. 
<laughs> yeah, I love it. Are you ever going to come back to the island to visit? Sooner or later, I'd like to. I haven't been invited yet, but I'd sure like to. I'd like to see Amityville, Copay, Massapequa, Massapequa, Lifted Earth, and You can get a job on the LIRR. That's great. Job security. Get the boy out of the album. Challenge out of the boy. Yeah, that's painful, though. <laughs> but the uh well, I have memories. Some of them were happy, some of them not so happy, but most of them involved crappy weather. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. okay. The trains still don't run on time either. None. I yeah. don't want to give any quote theories out there. Relax, relax. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <We're> all... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So, we don't know. We're, we're Skyping it's like, here. It's just we have a little delay. That's all. Sorry. First time. Hey, did he ever put you in any of the movies? I mean, you're good friends. Uh, did he throw you in something like you were one of the monkeys in Jumanji or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, Robin Williams movies. I've seen a few, but I'm not in any of them. Oh, that's but you cool. are in movies, right? For me. I'm in a movie called Comedy's Various Dozen from 1988, which also features Bill Hicks and some other really good people. Oh, ever. wow. I think it's available on Kenner, Snow, and Betamax. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the outlaws were big. You were part of the outlaws? I have an old CD out called Talking Trash, which you might be able to find on Amazon. I think they pay you to take it. And uh, I have a brand new DVD I'm trying to hawk at my shows. In fact, I'll be playing in Toronto at the end of the month, in early October, and uh, I hope somebody will show up and buy a couple of DVDs. It's an hour long time. When I get back, I'll send you one. All oh, right. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Yeah, one, See, we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, we wish we could have gotten you earlier, but we would like to Skype with you again sometime. Or come in when you're in Long Island. Here's come your invitation. You know, if you come to Long Island, you're always invited to come on the show. Hey, hey, I'm moving in with you next week. Stay <laughs> out of bed for me. He's hey. a good cook. Uh, he's always ma uh, he's making smoke. I'm a good cook, and uh, you could share the bed with Nate. Oh, no, you have a fiance. <laughs> and I got, after that, he'll kill me, and I got one already. So, uh, but no, I'm going to do this. I'm more than available. I love your show. More power to me. And keep it up, my friends. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Yeah. Thanks for uh, going through all the... Uh, the technical difficulties. The technical yeah. difficulties with us. You want to see Rick Maru, you okay. old man. I don't understand electronics. The last time I tried to send an email, I accidentally started a war with Malta. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the beverage? The beverage. <laughs> Malta is a country. Type. Oh, okay. I, I'm <laughs> engaged to a Puerto Rican. So. <laughs> my, my not point, I'm book of Max. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Stephen, thank, you, thank you so Appreciate much. It. Thanks thank you for very all much. the information. Thank you for the pictures and the podcast. And Tim, and uh, keep, keep on keeping on. Keep doing it, and I'll come on anytime you want me. If you're foolish enough to want me again, I'm here. <laughs> Absolutely. All See right. Stephen thank Pearl you. in Toronto, everyone. <laughs> yeah, hey, have hey. a great time in Toronto. Hey. Stephen Pearl, everyone. Hey. Hey, uh, bye. Hey, he's still there. <laughs> there, he <is>. uh, uh, <laughs> there he goes. And there he goes. <laughs> right. I think for 20 minutes he was talking to his VCR. <laughs> oh, my God, he's back. I'm all excited to come back since Larry Fine after his third stroke. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> everyone enjoys a good Larry Fine. <laughs> Well, Jeez, Mo. That's about it for us tonight. <laughs> Is he coming the back? Show. Yeah. I don't think he knows how to turn it. That you you were watching the Gagood show with our Robin Williams tribute and our Steve... special guest. Oh, Tim hey, Thompson. Cool. Uh -huh. Serious Robin Williams beard. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Oh, oh my God, he's Steve back. Pearl is back. Like herpes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> I think that's there forever. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like that movie. What's that movie where they, the, the ring where they the tape you play the tape and it keeps coming. Oh, uh, what was the name of that? The ring. The no, ring. no, it had the thing in it, like a circle. <laughs> what is he doing now? He's moving his <laughs> thing. All right, good night, everybody. Please turn thank it off before you go to the bathroom. The All right, thank you. Show on <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back to Heroes on Our Island. I'm your host, Christine Persichetti. Now let's head to Franklin Square, where we meet Thomas Kevin Honorado. The toddler suffers from a genetic disease so rare, there's no cure and minimal research. The little fighter was the inspiration for TKO Strong, a foundation his parents started to knock out this disease. Thomas Kevin Honorado was born five weeks early, but was given a clean bill of health. He was home for four days when his mom, Melissa, got the feeling something was wrong. He just didn't look right. He had kind of like a funny breathing pattern. So I took him to his pediatrician and she looked at me with a very scared face and said, you need to get in the car and go straight to North Shore NICU. A team of doctors and nurses were waiting for them. They basically grabbed him from me. They told me to go sit in the waiting room. They ripped him out of his clothes, you know, and started working on him immediately. Later, the doctor came out and told Melissa and her husband Thomas that baby Thomas was very, very sick. And he said that his kidneys had shut down, um, that he was having labored breathing, and had we not gotten him there when we did, he would have passed away. But they had no idea why this all happened. It was very frustrating because, you know, your child is sick. We were new parents, um, rough introduction to parenthood, and then nobody knows what's wrong with your child. They're wrong. A cure would be ideal, but if not a cure, at least um, a way to manage them without having liver issues or any other side effects. Um, and I've said, you know, I love him so much, and if it means a lifetime of TPN and knowing that he's going to outlive me and have children and just have a happy life, I'll take it. I'll take him being, you know, hooked up to TPN and, you know, I'll take him however I can as long as he's healthy and he lives a long life. TKO Strong has some fundraisers coming up. To get details, check out our Facebook page.